position. Suggest you get moving. No. Gas is closing on your position. Suggest you get moving. Oh, why do you have so much RGB? It's blinding me, and it won't make you any better. Well, actually, there are several studies that show how light and color affect mood and performance. See Kaplan and Kaplan, 1998. Plus, with my RGB keyboard, I can highlight specific layers and keys to be faster than you. Also, Hello. it's freaking awesome, just like you. Hello? 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 Hey, hi. Okay, um, let me open it up. Okay, um, I have no clue where we left off. Um, So I have um, detect when the ball hits the edge better. Because right now it looks like it goes into the ground a little bit. Mm. Okay. So we could do the place where we actually move the ball, we could check uh, whether it, like, how far into the ground, or whether it goes below the ground or something. Mm -hmm. Uh... Let's see. So right now I have it at plus the ball center plus ten. So wait, plus ten is this way. So I guess I mean a simple solution would just be guessing and checking this number. How big is our ball? Let me um if it's twenty then what is this diameter or radius? You know, um the ball number this twenty at the end. Um I don't know. Mm, okay. Um. We could, instead of putting the number 20 here, we could do something like 
ball radius equals 20 and then put ball radius here. Oh, that is definitely the radius then. Okay. Um, but the the problem. So the issue here isn't. That we are, I mean, there is the issue that we are detecting the ball center going through the floor instead of the ball edge going through the floor. Um, but, uh, so that that is part of the issue, but there's another issue, which is the ball is also traveling at some non-zero speed. And we are only calculating where the ball is every frame. And from one frame to the next, it could travel many pixels. Mm -hmm. Um, um, so Yeah, we can update this to be ball radius, and then here, actually, I might do something like ball Prior ball lower edge is equal to this. Um, so this will make it so that we detect when the edge of the ball goes below, from above to below the edge of the window. Um, but also, we need to, well, maybe that's good enough for now. Um, there, there is a, another thing, which is the ball is traveling at some speed. So it might be that, like say this line is the floor. It might be that the ball is traveling this way and one frame it's here. And then the very next frame it's traveling so fast that it gets all the way to here. Hmm. I mean, uh, I see the problem, I guess, but, okay, then do we, I don't know, like, <laughs> check faster? I, I don't know. Um, you could.
could check faster. Also, your prob prior ball lower edge, you should have prior ball center Y plus ball radius. And then you want uh, prior ball lower edge here, but ball lower edge over here. So on the, the if statement, uh, oh, and that's cool. We can do that. So here. Gesund height. Thank you. So this idea here is how we could handle that. Um, although this won't quite look right because normally when things bounce, they kind of squish into the ground a little bit and then they come back up. So this, if we, if we detect where it would be if it bounced as soon as it touches the floor, if we do that, um, it that will look wrong. <laughs> um, so uh, the fact that we let it go into the floor a little bit actually makes it look a little more accurate because there's two different errors going on at the same time. One is the error of not squishing, and that uh, is at odds with the error of not reacting soon enough. So the squishing makes the going back up a little bit slower, and the not reacting soon enough, uh, or the, the immediate reaction would make the ball go up faster, so they kind of cancel out. Which is kind of mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, we could maybe leave that for later. Or we could try to do that right now. I feel like we've done... Uh, at least a little... We did this part. Let's see. Or actually, what did we say here? Oh no, we didn't actually do that part. Um, detect that the ball would go below the floor and figure out where it should be. Position assumes the ball went into the ground some amount. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. So we did do that. Uh, and now this is another... Oops. To do. Uh...
Oh, we did this. So... I'll just... Yeah. So we did this. Um, so yeah, do you want to do this, or what do you want to um, do? Yeah, sure, you can do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, once we know that the ball has crossed... Then, however far below the edge it is, we could set it, I think it should be, if it bounced immediately as soon as it hit the edge, I think it would end up being that far above the edge. Wait, sorry, say that again? So right here, we detect that the ball has gone outside, like this is the exact, the, the soonest we know that the ball has gone outside the frame. So mm -hmm. in here, like the code where we react to that, we could see how far outside the frame it went and put it... Uh, inside the frame that much instead. So like if the edge is here, this line, then if the ball was here on one frame and then the next frame it's way down here, um, we yeah. could take this distance, the distance to the edge and put the ball, if it was traveling like this, then Let's say that it travels like one, two, and then the floor, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines. That means while we weren't la looking, it traveled seven lines outside the frame. If it had bounced as soon as it hit this edge, instead of going seven lines this way, it would have gone seven lines this way. that i uh i zoned out the very end like i i understood okay. everything before that so say the ball is up here this line okay and then the very next frame it's like down here somewhere mm -hmm. or sorry not the very next frame but where we calculate that it would go right now uh is all the way down here so the code that we have says, okay, down here, make it so that your ball velocity and ball, uh, ball y, uh, ball velocity is the opposite of what it used to be, and, oh, I think I have an, a typo here. That's oh, why. no, I don't. We are intentionally slowing it down a little bit okay so we just so it's it's down here and we say okay instead of traveling this way now travel that way instead of traveling down now travel up um and that's all we say and so the floor is here and we know that it's down here and we say all we do is say start going up instead of down um so what we could do is in addition to saying start going up, we could also have it start going up from up here somewhere. Because if it's traveling this way and it hits the floor here, then it won't start traveling up from here. In real life, it would start traveling up, like it would hit the floor and start going up. So we want to figure out how far up would it go. So, mm -hmm. if we look and it's here, 
and then we look again, and it's way down here, then, uh, according to our simulation, um, if we look and it's here, and then we look again and it's way down here, then in real life what would happen is it would be here, and then it would go one, two lines down, hit the edge, and then instead of going one, two, three, four, five lines down, it would go that many lines up instead, because it would hit the hit the edge, and then it doesn't go into the floor. It would turn around and go back up again. So it would go one, one, two, three, four, five lines up instead. If this is the edge, this line right here. Yeah. So how do we do that? How do we make that change? Okay. Since below ground is equal to It would be, would it be, I still don't really understand the difference between prior ball lower edge and ball lower edge. Um, oh, okay. Um, so prior ball lower edge is, you know how I was saying that like right here is where the ground is and we, uh, we look, uh, we calculate where the ball is and we say that it's like right here and then the next time we calculate where the ball would be and that would be like way down here prior ball edge is up here and ball edge is down here okay so okay. if it's traveling in this direction like downwards okay Something like this. Did that work? Um, not quite. So this would calculate where the ball's lower edge would be if you uh, subtracted off how far below the ground it went. If you, so that would be like, say the edge is here, and we go one two three four five lines down so the lower edge of the ball is here so we calculate this distance and then we subtract that off of this distance and that would bring us back to the floor we don't want to go back to the floor we want to go that distance mm. above the floor Okay. Also, instead of subtracting, we should be adding because the y-axis is flipped upside down. 
Oh, that's why I'm subtracting now, because it's going up. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, two times, does that solve the issue? Um, yeah. So then, now we've calculated where the lower edge of the ball would be. And so the lower edge of the ball, instead of going five lines down, for example, would go five lines up. Um, and But there's a little bit more to do. So this calculates where the lower edge of the ball would be. We want the... So that here we're drawing a circle based on ball center. And ball center is based on ball center Y. So we want to change ball center y based on this ball lower edge and then that'll change where the ball actually gets drawn also i'm realizing now that it'll be kind of difficult to tell whether or not this is working with the speeds that we are currently actually running because the ball uh is so slow that the difference here is going to be like maybe a couple of pixels <laughs> uh so um well i i guess we could just make the ball velocity really fast yeah we could, we could change the ball velocity but yeah so the first thing we need to do is the actual drawing depends on ball center ball center depends on ball center y and we haven't modified ball center y in this so we need to modify ball center y Okay. I like the idea of just make it go faster. Okay, this that should work, right? Um, ball center y is equal to ball radius. Is that a minus? Yes. Minus ball lower edge. Uh, ball radius. I think I think we want to flip these two around. We take where the ball lower edge is and subtract away the ball radius to get to the ball center y. Well, I just took it based off this. Oh wait. Oh well, for adding, yeah. Oh 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 wait 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 no I'm wrong. When you You're add right. the yeah, yeah, yeah I was. Order doesn't matter. Uh, there's a name for that property. I think that's commutative. <laughs> okay, and then we can make the ball velocity y super fast. Commutative property. You got it. I was thinking associative, but that's the one with parentheses. Yeah. I'm going to put the ball lower edge here just to see if it works. Just to see where it is. Okay. And it goes here. Cool. 
<laughs> so we can tell how how much of a difference it's actually going to make. <laughs> yeah, we'll try. We'll have a number printed out. What's up? We'll see. No, we'll see regular speed for now and see. Yeah, I'm. I'm guessing it's going to be like one. Nope, it's less than one. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah, I was like, wait, six hundred. Oh, that's right. Yeah, six hundred point six one something. So yeah, it's like less than a pixel. So so yeah, at the normal speed, this isn't gonna make much of a difference. But if we change this to a quick, um, let's say, I don't know, let's go. Ninety thousand. <laughs> I think I think we're gonna come in to yeah. <laughs> so so now I think we're having a different issue, which is, um, let's say that the the entire window is this tall, and we're starting the ball off in the center of these three lines, but it's traveling so fast. I think that it ends up way down here. So then we say, okay, uh, instead of being that far down, it should be that far above. So instead of being way down here, it's way up here. It's still out of frame. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's going up. <laughs> Because we flipped the velocity. Um, so I think actually after walking through that, now that I now that I'm now that I'm saying that out loud, I think eventually it should come back. But when it does, it's gonna be traveling this way. And it might be that it trav it travels this way so fast that in one frame it goes from I think entirely it above the window. It. What? I'm, I think it might be going faster because of the the multiplication of dt to ball velocity, velocity y, like, above. Oh, yeah. So it might be going faster than what I put it at. Uh, yeah. Wait, what? where did you, you changed, where did you change? Oh, you changed here? Yeah. Instead of a zero, you put 9,000? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the, the window... How big is the window? The y axis. Is it it's 600. Yeah. Okay. So it's traveling more than that many pixels per frame. So we're never going to see it. Or if we do, we'll see it for one frame only. We want to put a uh, speed somewhere closer to the size of the window. <laughs> Go two hundred. Oh, whoops! Wrong spot. Uh... Nice. So it only went. Oh, okay. That is a problem. It just kept on going up. Um, it'll come back. But it didn't look like it was slowing down at all. Uh, I think I think it. We don't have anything. Let's see. We let's let's see if we can find out in the code. Will will it come back? <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. Also, how far uh, did it print out? Oh, oh there it is. <laughs> did it print out um, how far below the axis it would have gone? Okay, so two. still only two pixels. Okay. Yeah, um, but that, that doesn't seem realistic. That what's happening right here. I yeah, it's going... it does. It does look weird. And that's because of the squish thing. The squish and, thing? Yeah, so when real objects hit the floor and bounce, they squish a little bit. Yeah, but I think it's also speeding up in the middle a little bit. Like, if you look at it, it like... Oh, never mind. Huh. I don't know. It's not even just a squish. It just seems like it's going up at 
too constant of a rate. I think that's something we need that we change like somewhere. Oh, not that. Somewhere uh, here. Or something like that. Or here. Yeah, we could make gravity a more significant number. I think that would make it more obvious that the speed is changing. So if we change okay, gravity now... to be like 50. Okay. Oh, because right now this is saying meters per second, but there are 600 pixels, so it's not really doing much. Yeah, so imagine you're watching like a gigantic ball from miles away. <laughs> That's basically what we're animating right now. Okay. From your point of view, that ball wouldn't be traveling up and down in your field of vision. It wouldn't be traveling up and down very fast, but you would know that it's really, really far away. So you would have some sense of like, wow, it must be traveling really fast. Kind of like airplanes, like in, in, in some sense, they're not traveling very fast. When you see them like out up in the sky, it's like far away. Mm-hmm. Oh, whoops. Uh, oh. <laughs> I was like, what's what's the problem? That looks fine. <laughs> Is he going to get to the top? Oh, <laughs> that's so close. That's funny. Okay, so it's still less than a pixel. <laughs> Whoa, why that? Oh, that one went in more a little bit. Oh, that's interesting. weird. Huh. I guess, like, the rate is weird. So, like, sometimes it hits directly. Well, just oh. depends on. Yeah. When we check. So, yeah. Okay. So, like, if the ground is here, the distance that the ball is traveling is about the same every time maybe it's about 10 pixels every time but how far above the edge of the window might change so it might be that one time it's this far above and like here's the the edge of the window the ball might be here then here and another time it might be here then here so the number of pixels below the edge of the screen would change based on that. That's interesting. I hadn't I hadn't really thought about that. Anyway, uh so we could work on squish. So let me go back oh. to <laughs> notes. Oh Look now it. it's yeah. <laughs> so that's another thing that we could work on. Um, okay, so uh, take into account the, 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 so we did that um, and now we have um, to do take into account squish and also uh, stop bouncing at some point. So um, the way we've calculated everything, we're in an idealized world where uh, the ball never stops bouncing because it's always going um, some non-zero speed. And we don't have anything here that's taking that into account. There's nothing here that actually takes energy uh, that subtracts a constant amount of energy away. We always uh, make the energy be some fraction of what the energy was. Which is not what happens in real life. In real life, it loses um the amount of energy that it loses on each bounce doesn't go down 
as the amount of energy that the ball has goes down, uh, it doesn't go down proportionally. Mm-hmm. Due uh, to there's some friction. there's some amount. Yeah, there's friction. There's uh, the squish um, that heats up the ball, and so some energy is lost to that. Um, so yeah, we there's a lot of stuff we could do here. Uh, so we could take into account squish, stop bouncing at some point. Uh, to do this, we need to remove energy from the system in a way that is not nearly proportional to the amount of energy currently in the system, i.e. Um, so, yeah, and then squish, uh, we would have to, we could do something like subtract some small number, some small constant from the energy of the ball, and... How else? So we would, in order to stop, so uh, maybe subtract some constant amount, small constant amount of speed from the ball. Um, and then we would also need to uh, make the ball slow uh i don't know um take some non zero amount of time to turn around and go up i think that would make it look more like a bounce like a normal bounce although <laughs> What we have now looks pretty good. Uh, like the the difference this would make would only be a few pixels. You saw the uh, I like the how you printed out how many pixels below it's actually going, so we could tell how much of a difference it would even make, and we can tell that at most that one time it would have made four pixels difference. <laughs> yeah. So maybe maybe we don't need to worry about this right now. But we could, um but we could keep the, yeah. Wait. Uh, never mind. Okay. Um let's see. Oh yeah, we also had this idea. Uh, so cannonball fired sideways. Mm hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> and we're ignoring uh, air resistance. So this this would be a ball going like directly to the right, let's say, um, at a constant speed, and then so the x velocity would be some constant, and the y velocity would be. 
um, initially zero and subject to uh, gravity. Yeah, it would be okay. Well, I mean, the projectile motion equation that we used <laughs> in math is negative 16 time squared plus y velocity times t plus however plus constant as in where it started y oh okay is that are you like in a physics class uh no this was um this was for math for because oh, okay. we wanted to, they wanted to teach us parametrics and this is and define time is using parametrics oh, okay um oh and then <laughs> so i'll write yeah, that in the notes here uh oops 16 times time um distance is equal to squared velocity <laughs> man times time i believe right and time is equal to a lot uh distance divided by velocity so this um 16 times time squared does What's getting squared here? The oh, just, time? Just the time. Just the time. Okay, so I'll do that. And then... That's negative 16, I believe. <laughs> Man. Okay, um, plus y velocity uh, times time plus constant. <laughs> Uh, what is that? Where it started? Why? Yeah. So just like <laughs> how high it was. Yeah, that's for like if you hit a baseball at ten feet above the ground at a velocity of um like twenty meters a second, <laughs> when it go over a nine foot wall. I see. Oh, and then like add a forty five degree angle or something. Uh, um okay. Yeah, we haven't done angles at all. I was thinking the reason I was thinking going directly to the right is so that we can cheat on that. Yeah, but we can just <laughs> use well if it well if we go directly right then the angle is zero. Um so then like I don't know what that look then it would just be Stuff simplifies, I think. I don't know, because that's how we uh, you, you we use a triangle to find the y and x velocity based on oh, okay. the angle and um based on the angle and the velocity the object is going at. So <coughs> let's say it's going at a forty five degree angle, like ten meters a second. Then you can use like Pythagoras theorem, whatnot, to find um the x component and the y component. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that sounds good. So, <coughs> um, uh, calculate velocity using, uh, parameterized equations. So that's, I guess this can go here. Um, and then let me turn off that. Ah, okay. Calculate, uh, and then also uh, calculate x and y component of velocity using Pythagoras. 
How do you spell Pythagoras? Is this right? I do not believe so. Pythagoras? A-S, maybe? Yeah, A-S. At least, I got hits for Wikipedia when I put it. Pythagoras. Yeah. Got it. Okay, cool. Um, so that's another to do. Um, so once we have the velocity in terms of time, then we can calculate the x and y component of the velocity. And once we have the x and y component of the velocity, we can update the position based on that. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I think for a ball fired directly sideways, um, I think uh, the following is true. Uh, X velocity is constant, ignoring wind uh, resistance and y velocity <coughs> changes uh, with gravity. Um, so the y velocity changes exactly the same as we're current as we currently calculate it. Mm -hmm. um, and to do anything more complicated than straight down or straight sideways initial conditions um, I think you could keep doing it this way but I think the I think it's actually at that point it becomes easier to do this uh, method um, but I'm not sure, uh, maybe it's easy, easier to do this even with the parameterized, uh, and let's see, do we have what, what we currently have? Is it parameterized? What determines whether something is parameterized? No, this is stepwise calculated so at every frame we are re we are updating and then we're recalculating based on the previous frames values um so i'm pretty sure this doesn't count as parameterized anyway uh yeah so, do you have anything you want to add or modify about the to-do lists? Uh, no, it looks good to me. Is there one of these that you, like, want to do first? I think, why don't we finish this, uh, first one. Squish? And, like, it's the squish, and then... We'll see, um, yeah, and then we'll go on from there. Okay. Sounds good. See you next time. Yep, see you. Thank bye. you, bye.